Tundra Trackers, Arpara's teeny tiny VR headset review, HP Reverb G2 refresh review. Ah, I know what I should make this week, a Quest 2 best games of 2021 list video. No, actually, I haven't made one of these in almost a year, and to be honest, my last list video hasn't aged all that well, as a lot of pretty great Quest games have been released since, so I figured it's about that time. And just to be clear here, there are a few games that I will not be including on this list. These games are what I like to call no brain or must-haves. These games are on literally every single list video and you probably already know about them, so there's no point in occupying valuable space on this one. Oh, and I'll also have an honorable mentions for some of my favorite PC VR titles at the end, but that deserves a whole video on its own, so I'll keep this one completely composed of Quest standalone titles besides the end mentions. Before we start with number 10, let's get some of the must-haves out of the way. Poster child of the Quest, Beat Saber, of course. I mean, it's the absolute top-selling Quest game, probably best-selling VR game of all time, and doesn't really need to be on a list. Super Hot, Pistol Whip, the Star Wars Vader Immortal series, all good games for the Quest, but like I said, they've been on a thousand lists before, they don't need to be here. Oh, and Rec Room and VR Chat. Well, they're free, just download them, they're both great social VR experiences, and they're like 9,000 games in one. And you don't really have anything to lose, by downloading them since they're free, except your time. Oh, and one more Echo Arena, also free. If you like competitive zero gravity robot frisbee soccer, just download it and try it. But let's finally get started here with the best of Quest 2021. Number 10, a game that I slept on for way too long, A Township Tale. So I'm gonna be real here, I don't really play a lot of A Township Tale, but that's also because if I did, I'd probably get sucked into it and never get any work done. However, I have played enough to know that this one is a banger. The game isn't perfect, and it's definitely not the prettiest VR game out there, but due to the multiplayer sandbox nature, you could literally sink hundreds of hours into it. Now, the biggest reason I didn't play A Township Tale for so long is because nobody really explained what it really was, and I wasn't all that interested, and that was a mistake. So here's my attempt at explaining what it even is. Basically, it's a multiplayer sandbox RPG where you're put into a scenario to build a functioning town from scratch. You can kinda sorta be anything as well, be it a chef, miner, blacksmith, but the real core of the game are the interactions you have with other players. It's probably the most cooperative VR game out there, and if you're looking to lose yourself to resource gathering, enemy slaying, and exploration, it's 10 bucks and it's worth a good try. Now for number 9, a game you may have not heard of, Song in the Smoke. If A Township Tale is a survival crafting RPG for the multiplayer player, Song in Smoke is a similar style of RPG, but for the solo traveler and cranked up to 11. This is a legit, fully fleshed out survival RPG. Crafting weapons, having to eat food, make clothes, keep yourself warm, Song in the Smoke has a lot of depth and potential for replayability. The graphics are pretty impressive, and if survival, crafting, and Hunger Games are your cup of tea, then well, this game is just a massive cup of tea waiting for you, and the environments are pretty original too. If there's a hidden gem on this list, this is definitely it. Number 8. Probably one of my favorite games on the quest in general, Hand Physics Lab. Just a warning though, this game is pretty low on this list for a variety of reasons. It isn't long, I mean there's no story, it's literally just a hand tracking puzzle game at the end of the day, but it's fun. And even though the game won't last you for thousands of hours or take you through some incredible story journey, it's one that I keep coming back to for all of the wacky puzzles, and it's one that I often show people when I'm showing the quest the first time. And one thing is always true, it always puts a smile on people's faces. Using just your fingers and hands, no controllers, there are about 80 puzzles to complete. That is, unless you're an absolute monster and you want to use controllers for this, I guess it supports it. But it kind of defeats the whole gimmick of hand physics lab. Really, this is just a fun, lighthearted VR game. And if you haven't messed around with hand tracking on your quest much, then 10 bucks and you'll probably have a game that you'll come back to pretty often. Number 7, Larsenauts. So, honestly, I didn't really want to include this game here. I'll be reeling up front with you guys. There are some fundamental issues that sometimes make this game terribly unfun, but it's still here on this list for some really good reasons. Let me explain both sides real quick. Larsenauts is sort of like Overwatch, but in VR. It's a hero-based competitive shooter, and it does that pretty well. It's fun, the graphics are clean, there's a relatively active player base, plenty of game modes, a variety of heroes to choose from, I 
mean, I love Overwatch, and while this isn't quite the hero shooter I want long term for a class-based competitive VR shooter, it's what we got right now, and it's actually pretty freaking good. There isn't anything wrong with the game itself, and it's stable, and if you're tired of the same military sim shooter in VR over and over again, and if Overwatch and Paladins is more your style, then this will probably turn into your favorite VR FPS, and it can easily turn into your main game. However, there are some issues. The game isn't balanced very well, which is somewhat excusable, except it has a big problem. It costs 30 bucks, and then you have to spend hours unlocking all of the heroes, which breaks the game completely when you play against a team that has all of the heroes unlocked, which is most of the active player base. Sometimes there's quite literally nothing you can do except leave the match or get stomped, and I end up just closing the game sometimes, because often my team just doesn't even have a healer or proper tank, or I can't even make a proper team composition. But this game is still on this list for how polished it is and how much potential there is and how much fun I have had. But I've also had so much unfun that I couldn't mention this game without also saying it has issues. It's complicated, but I'm still playing it. I just wish the devs would actually listen to the community more. Please, <laughs> it's, it's a fun game. Number six. The other VR shooter I kind of like. Population 1. You probably already know about this game, but this is my top game list, and Pop1 deserves it because I play it quite often. This is a multiplayer battle royale first person shooter where you try to be the last standing squad of three in a lobby, akin to Fortnite or Apex Legends. I won't go into too much detail, but the shooting mechanics are clean, consistent, there are constant, and I mean constant, free content updates and experimental game modes all of the time. For example, right now there's a team deathmatch mode and there have been solos before. There's a ton of gun and character skins to unlock, and contrary to the name, Population 1 has a very healthy player base. You'll always find people to play with no matter what the time. And yeah, this battle royale does have building like in Fortnite, but if you never want to touch the building aspect of Pop 1, you can play the game still and grab a dub every now and then. Number 5. Looks like you've hit the jackpot with another relaxing mission. Finally, the new game releases. I expect you to die too. I didn't really think I liked escape room style puzzle games until I played the original I Expect You to Die. Then just a few months ago, the sequel was released and the whole franchise and game got even better. And I could easily say this is probably one of the better VR games ever released, quest or not. It's funny, immersive, memorable, and somewhat replayable. You're given a storyline instead of missions where you have to solve a variety of puzzles and basically just don't die. Even if you don't like puzzle games, trust me, you'll end up laughing, gasping, frustrated, and feeling accomplished by the end of the five to six hour storyline. Number four, 11 Table Tennis. Now this one may sound a little weird given the past few games and the games that are ahead of this one, but if there is a quest game that I've sort of become obsessed with and that I end up talking about more than all of the others, it's this one. Super realistic physics, lots of customization, and a really active online player base to play against, it's weird how even though there are a lot of these pretty impressive VR games for Quest at this point, I end up always asking people, but have you played 11 Table Tennis yet? It's not only a good intro to VR for new people, but it's just a clean, solid game. And it's uh, easily the best ping pong I've ever played without a physical paddle. And now we're in the top three, it's about to get serious. Number three. Resident Evil 4. Now, I never played Resident Evil 4 originally when it came out like 16 years ago, so I don't have any nostalgia factor regarding this game at all. But I can say, regardless of any nostalgia, it's a good VR game. It looks good, has a great story, and it's super atmospheric and immersive. And for being a pretty old flat screen game, the gameplay in VR works really well. There is some controversy over some censorship and changed dialogue within the game versus the original, but I never played the original, so I'm just kind of judging it off of my first experience. The one big negative of Resident Evil 4 VR is that the story cutscenes are all flat 2D pre-rendered scenes and it's kind of an immersion buster after you just got done pulling out guns and knives. But if you're here for gameplay, story, and visuals, it's really hard to go wrong with Resident Evil 4. Number two. Blade and Sorcery Nomad. 
This game isn't perfect. This game isn't even technically finished, still in an early access state. But the fact that nearly a full version of the PC VR Blade and Sorcery is on the Quest 2 is an absolute technical marvel. I would put Gorn on this list, but Blade and Sorcery kicked Gorn off of the list. And even though this game is still lacking a true progression system and a lot of the actual story elements from the game's dungeon mode are yet to come in 2022, the current sandbox and randomized dungeon maps will still entertain you for hours and Nomad at its core is just a physics-based combat playground where you can slice and dice and use magic to ward off waves of enemies. It's just great fun, looks good, and plays good, and has a very bright future. Uh, number 1.5 <laughs> bonus game. I won't go on too long about it, but I do truly believe that this is one of the absolute best VR games ever made, and it needs to be on this list. And while everyone probably already knows about it, if you still need convincing, go and get Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I've said it before, I'm I'm pretty zombied out game wise and I don't really care about the Walking Dead franchise like at all but Saints and Sinners is so good that none of that matters. Really great gameplay, a fantastic story, amazing graphics. The only reason why you shouldn't own this game is if you just don't like shooting things. Otherwise it's probably the best most fleshed out and complete AAA level game on the Quest Store hands down. But that doesn't make it my favorite or most impactful for me and that doesn't mean it's at the very top of my list because number one winner of VR Awards Game of the Year for good reason. Demio is a tabletop Dungeons & Dragons style RPG that you can play with your friends, but it's a little more than that. The theming and style of Demio make it so immersive and incredibly fun, kind of like you're in Hearthstone or something, that's what it reminds me of. I often find myself getting easily sidetracked or distracted with a lot of other games. Demio, on the other hand, give me a few friends, hop into a campaign, and before you know it, hours have passed, many laughs have been had, and I've been on some emotional roller coaster through the ups and downs of our adventures. It's a beautiful game that has gotten me through 2021 and provided me with so many great experiences. There are just a lot of deep interactions to be had and the replayability is really high. It's a massive recommendation and if you could get like three friends to play with, promise you'll have a really good time. And of course, here is a quick honorable mentions for PC VR games if you use Airlink or Oculus Link or of course virtual desktop. Obviously, go get the games like VR Chat, Boneworks, Half-Life Alex, or Pavlov, no duh. But three games in particular stand out as being highly underrated, amazing PC VR games that are either on the same level of something like Half-Life Alex, or maybe in some ways even better. Stormland, a beautiful robot RPG, gorgeous aesthetics, story, everything, plus it's actually co-op, like almost the whole thing. Asgard's Wrath, probably the closest you can get to a VR God of War, really incredibly put together game, and Lone Echo 1 and 2, one of my favorite VR only franchises. These are all must play VR games, and if you haven't played them and you say there's no good PC VR games, then well, you're just missing out because you're sleeping on it. I'll probably end up making a full PC VR games list at some point and really letting some of these titles uh, see some light. So let me know if you really want that or if you have any suggestions for games. So here's the best of Quest from me. There have been quite a few pretty good games. I mean, nothing crazy spectacular, but I will say that anything on this list is my own opinion. You may disagree and that's totally fine. But if you disagree, then let me know in the comments down below what your list would look like because uh, I I care a little bit. And join up in my Discord if you want to join a cool VR community to play some of these games with, since usually things are better with friends. And I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. You make all of this possible, and I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.